When people hear the name New York, many think back to September 11, 2001. The terrorist attacks that morning affected the country in an incredible way. And from the ashes comes the newest naval warship. In honor of the city, the state, and the people of New York, and in the name of the United States of America, I christen thee New York. Now, more than seven years later, the survivors, family members, and rescue workers share their stories in hopes that remembering what happened will help prevent an attack in the future. September 11th, I was at home. Um, it was early in the morning, and so I was having a cup of coffee uh, in the kitchen. It was a beautiful day. My children uh, started school. It might have been the first or the second day of school. Uh, I had just moved, so there was some, you know, local duties that I had to do at my home, painting and such. September 10th, I came into work. It was a, uh, I was doing 24-hour shift, which is typical for the fire department. I came in that night, and it was a typical night. We had a few... Uh, minor emergencies, nothing serious. And uh, that morning, we had a run, I think, about 8 in the morning. And it's right by the water, by the East River. So I noticed, just, I just noticed it was a beautiful day. And I usually don't notice that, those kind of things. I don't make a big deal about the, the, the weather or anything. But I just, I just didn't notice this. Wow, what a day. Ialpi, Cross, and Parker are all retired New York City firefighters. After September 11th, Ielpi founded the September 11th Families Tribute Center in honor of the victims of 9-11. My son, Jonathan, the oldest, uh, called, uh, told us to turn the TV on, uh, and I, I saw what everybody saw. Jonathan worked in a squad, 288. It's a special unit within the fire department. Um, I asked if he was going. He said we should be. Uh, next thing I could hear a tone in the background, which signifies they're going out on a run. So he said, Dad, we're going to the World Trade Center. I said, okay, Jonathan, be careful. And that's the last time I spoke to my son. Across town, Engine Company 16 just returned from a call. Preparing for an administrative day, as he calls it, Cross was sitting at his desk when the phone rang. I got back to the firehouse, and I had the fire department radio on on my desk, and uh, I'm listening to it, and I hear that a plane just struck the uh, World Trade Center tower. World tower. And my girlfriend happened to, she, who happens to live near, right near the World Trade Center, she, she just called me at that moment, and she tells me that her building shook. So uh, I told her, I said, Christine, don't worry, it's a small plane at the Trade Center, you're in no danger. Me not knowing what's going on down there. And as I'm on the phone with her, we get our alarm goes off, sending us down to the World Trade Center. I told her, Christine, I'm going to the, the Trade Center. Uh, I'll see you later for dinner. Across the river from Manhattan, New Jersey, Parker was just getting his morning started. Had the television on, watched the news, saw what had happened, and uh, realized that I, I was no longer on vacation. And I got in my car and went to the first firehouse I can get to get some direction, some orders, gear, come come down here as quick as possible, and, uh, and help. We sailed into a debris field halfway through. It's only probably a 20 minute ferry ride. About 10, 12 minutes in, the, uh, the debris field and smoke was, was blowing directly at us. So we, we couldn't see. We couldn't see until we actually hit Manhattan. The smoke cleared, and the weight of the attacks became clear. I don't remember uh, 
how this happened, but the next thing I heard this loud noise over my head and I ducked in the corner. I was totally buried that I could barely move. Uh, I was able to wiggle my fingers a little bit. In fact, for a couple of seconds, I wasn't sure if I was alive because there was a lot of noise, getting hit with things, and all of a sudden, total, everything stopped. It was just like total silence. The building fell in eight seconds, and then it was total silence. Silence like I never heard in my life. Uh, and I'm in the staircase, and uh, then I started hearing noises. I, hear, I heard voices. I heard guys were yelling out, Jimmy, you okay? Bobby, you okay? There's, you know, noises like that. And it turned out there was, there was 14 of us that were alive. First time the wind parted, I was able to see not more than 18 or 19 stories of, of, of steel girders and debris. I waited again because I didn't believe what I saw. And then when that happened again and I had a clear view again, for just a brief moment, I said to myself, where did two 110-story buildings go? The answer came several years later with the naming of a U.S. Navy ship. Seven and a half tons of the mangled steel was transported to Louisiana, where it was melted down and used in the bow stem of LPD-21. There, there were many thoughts in the beginning about um, the USS New York and what it's going to symbolize. Um, we've had some families say, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with steel from here going into a warship. It didn't take long, though, when we were talking about it and thinking about it, to understand that our country, this beautiful place called America, the USA, was founded by our forefathers who gave blood, gave their lives, that we could live in freedom. This ship is the symbol of what our country has always been about, our freedoms. As the ship is built, its construction workers say they understand what this ship means to New Yorkers and to the country. I've been hearing a lot of people saying, you know, this spirit, the spirit of this ship is different from a lot of other ships. And I believe it has a personality of its own, being that it was formed from a part of the World Trade Center. Everybody's coming together to make sure that this is the one ship that's going to stand out and go down in history. Uh, I think its value is really yet to be appreciated um, as far as how it's going to perform and what it's capable of. Uh, as far as its value from a um, historical standpoint, you know, I see us basically building history. I've told my crew that what, what inspired me was the realization that you know, the seven and a half tons of metric steel from the World Trade Center in this ship and carrying the name New York uh, is indeed just incredibly important. We're building a piece of history that 50 years from now, kids are going to be in their schools and they're studying their little history classes. They're going to come home and sit at the kitchen table and their mom's going to ask them, you know, what did you do today? And they're going to say, well, you know, today we studied about 9-11. And they're going to look in their little history books and there'll be pictures of uh, the Twin Towers. And there'll be pictures of the Freedom Tower still in the process of being built. And right there next to it's going to be a picture of the USS New York. Back in New York City, that Freedom Tower is being built with some of the same hands that built the Twin Towers more than 30 years ago. When I became a journeyman, I was fortunate enough to build the World Trade Center Tower won the first time in 1971, and at that time, you know, it didn't seem like it just seemed like another job. But uh, after seeing them come down 30 years later, and I still get the goosebumps today, you know, I feel it an honor to be here again to to, to build the second ones, and uh, God bless them, and they never come down again, you know. As the Freedom Towers grow out of ground zero and construction of LPD-21 continues, New Yorkers take pride in the Navy's efforts to fight terrorism and honor the heroes and victims of 9-11. To me, it was special, you know, because the, the ship, the ship was made out of steel that came from the Trade Center. And some of that steel may have come down on my head, and now it's going to be part of a ship. So I got a special attachment to that ship. So. 
as long as that ship sails the seas, I feel like I'm, I'm on board, <laughs> you know, it's part of me, so. I feel it's a, a, a tremendous show, not only for New York, of support, but it's all, also, it shows the bad guys that, okay, you know, you won the battle, but now look, we're taking what you caused, and we're gonna come back right at you, and we're gonna get you, and, I, and to me, uh, it was a great honor to be there and to see that ship and to know that, you know, eight tons of steel from the Trade Center that I stood on trying to find people, now was going to be used to go get the people that had caused such harm to America. I'm, I'm originally from the state of New York, and, and so the honor of being associated with USS New York, both with the history of the preceding USS New Yorks, as well as, obviously, the tie-in with 9-11, World Trade Center Steel, and then having the ship survive Hurricane Katrina and all the, the things that have gone on with that is just, it's an incredible feeling. It's incredibly humbling. And, and we have to stay on top of them. You know, we're gonna win. We won. The country knows we won. They know we won. Because look, we're free. We're free. They tried to kill freedom. It'll never happen. Never. You can try and hurt us, but there'll always be that shadow out there saying, be careful, because we value our freedoms. And the USS New York echoes that. For All Hands Television, I'm Petty Officer Mark Schultz.